Well, hello everyone and welcome back to another Theme Park Obsession video. My name is Dylan and thank you so much for tuning back into the channel. Today I'm hanging out at the Disneyland Resort to check up on California Adventure, maybe Downtown Disney, maybe World of Disney, maybe Disneyland, maybe a bunch of different things. We're just gonna have some fun as always to keep you all up to date as to what's going on here. So how about you and I dive right in. Made it to California Adventure where we're gonna start the journey. And look at this, upon entering the park, you can see they're preparing for the Pixar Fest. A lot of banners have gone up on the street lights. And what's cool is all the banners have different characters on them. And there's a lot of decorations that probably still need to go up, especially overnight, because they're not gonna do too much during the day. Pixar Fest is slowly approaching. Remember, Pixar Fest starts April 26th and goes all the way up until August 4th. So yeah, you're gonna have all summer to enjoy the Pixar Fest, plenty of time. But with that, let's continue our journey through the rest of California Adventure. Golden Vine Winery, the walls are still up around the Blue Sky Cellar, so I'm wondering what's going on over here. Never mind, I figured it out. They're building a DVC uh, club over there. I feel like there's so many DVC clubs popping up that no one really goes to. No, I don't hear anybody talk about them. I don't know, I kind of like the idea of a Blue Sky Cellar. You know, the fact that Disney used to tease like upcoming projects and show off concept art and scale models was so cool and I think People love seeing that stuff. So yeah, Disney, come on, bring back the Blue Sky Cellar. Oh, how cute. As I'm making my way into Pixar Pier, look, the baby geese are hanging out on the rocks right here. And one of them just kind of cruising around. Ooh, and we got some World of Color testing going on for later on this evening. You know, for Friday, it's actually not that bad in the park. I mean, it's busy, but it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. In addition to all the entertainment coming for Pixar Fest, we also have some specialty food and beverages coming to the resort, including some coming to the Lamplight Lounge. So I'll be sure to try some of those when it kicks off later on this month. I'm gonna get a closer shot of the Incredicoaster, but you can see that it is not running today. That's because it's in refurb. They're working on the attraction. And this coaster has been going through a pretty extensive refurb. They've been uh, working on some track pieces throughout the layout. And this happens quite often on Incredicoaster because there are some points on this ride that have really high amounts of stress. But don't worry, the attraction will be open here in the next couple days. And the refurb is the exact reason why you're seeing this crane here on site the past couple days. Yeah, it's because they've been lifting up pieces of track to complete that inversion. This, this section of the inversion, and just the inversion in general really, is a very high stress point. And yeah, like I've said, they've done this many times in the past. This is nothing new. Some people online are being way too dramatic about this and saying it's something way more insane and serious. No, this is a routine maintenance. I think I've seen them do this like three or four times. It's like every couple years, like every like four to five years, they'll bring a crane out here to take apart the loop, either work on that section of track or they'll replace it entirely. And another really high stress point is right here, right after the launch. So the coaster train will be launched zero to about 55 miles an hour just a few seconds up this hill and this section right here the curve that goes up the hill is that you can see it bend and give way just because yeah I mean the weight of the train and the, that happens thousands and thousands and thousands of times so eventually yeah they have to go in and kind of replace this section and then yeah in just a couple days they'll take all the scaffolding down and reveal the uh, either the current track or some new track 
and they'll start cycling and get this thing back open. And I wouldn't be surprised over here at the Emotional Whirlwind if they're working on these sections. I mean, they, we do have some scaffolding right there, so they could be working on this. But there are two valleys in this area. So we have, or actually there's three, yeah, there's three. We have the one that kind of goes down and up towards the lift hill. We have the one that comes off that first launch. And then we have the one that dips down where Violet is and then up over here. So they could be working on these stress points as well. And we got some work walls over on this side with some more scaffolding. Yeah, they could be working on some paint as well. We look at this here in the Grizzly Peak area, the Redwood Creek Challenge Trail is in refurb. And we have a few brave souls going on Grizzly River Run. Yeah, it's pretty cold today. By the way, for those that are wondering, they did move the lockers over here because remember they're working on the locker area some DBC stuff. So they've moved it over here to where this meet and greet used to be. I wonder if they still do meet and greets, maybe on this corner. But if you want to put your stuff in a locker, you do not want to get it wet on the attraction, you can here. Let's see if they're charging because the lockers before did not cost money. Nope, they're still free, so there you go. And also another thing I've noticed here in Grizzly Peak is they've changed out the churro cart that's over by the Redwood Creek Challenge Trail. And I like the look of this new one. It's like a camper, and I think it fits the theme a little bit better over here. Oh man, could you imagine if they had the geyser on right now? These people would be annihilated. Yeah, that would that would not be good, especially on a cold day like today. Yeah, the weather here in SoCal is gonna be a little weird the next couple months because we have the May gray coming up, June gloom, and then around like July, through October, it's pretty nice. Okay, I've made it out of the park. I'm gonna head over to downtown Disney next because there's a lot to talk about over there. And I think the parks are getting busier. Now, earlier, I was saying, yeah, it wasn't that bad, but now I think more people are coming in. And look at this, they have the Pixar Fest banners up in the Esplanade. Ooh, what the animal kingdom is going on over here? We have the Secrets of the Octopus. We have a nice little piece of art down here. It's not chalk, it's like a sticker. So there you go, if you wanna take a National Geographic photo. And we've actually seen these at Animal Kingdom before. So I'm surprised they're popping up here at the Disneyland Resort. I mean, they probably figure why not. Now, because this is the Disney octopus, there has to be a hidden Mickey on here somewhere. And I'm, I'm destined to find it. And if not, then I just wasted three hours trying to find it. I, I, yeah, I feel like there has to be one on here. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Go ahead and comment down below. Did you find it? Did you see it? I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> I feel like there has to be. Okay, really quick. I wanted to mention this before I forget. I was going to mention it earlier on in the video, but... Disneyland Paris recently changed the name of their sister theme park out there. It's now called Adventure World, and I'm I still gotta get used to it. <laughs> Probably still gonna call it like you know the Studios Park, but Adventure World is the new name of the secondary park over there at Disneyland Paris. And I'm wondering if they're gonna do the same to California Adventure one day. We definitely still have nods of California in the theme park, but. I feel like slowly but surely over time, the California theme is disappearing from the park and I wonder if there's gonna be another name change uh, in the works. I feel like myself and so many other Disney fans have wanted Disney to change the name of California Adventure. So maybe it'll happen sometime in the future since they did this to the Studios Park out in Paris. But what's also interesting in Paris is they're also reimagining the front entrance, but they're still keeping the Studios theme with the front entrance. So this also kind of worries me for D23 ever so slightly because it's like, I feel like the direction, I, I, I don't know, maybe Disney's going through a weird moment because isn't that weird? Am I the only one that thinks it's weird? You change the name of that park out there, but yet you still keep the studio theme to it. That, that's, I don't know, that's odd to me. Now, before I get started on all the new goodies coming to downtown Disney, I'm gonna go to Naples' sister location for some lunch. Good old Napoli. Pizza obtained. All right, make your guesses. What do you think I got? Go ahead and comment down below. I'll give you a couple seconds. Three, two, one. All right, guessing's over. Pepperoni, if you guess pepperoni, you are the winner. Unfortunately, I do not have a prize for you. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, this pizza is legit. If you really love the food over at Naples, you're gonna love it over here. It's the same stuff. And yeah, I mean, I can eat their pizza every single day. Okay, let's start off with Marceline's Confectionery. This is a very popular spot. At Downtown Disney, they're always making some tasty treats over here. Let's see what they got going on today. Ooh, we got some caramel apples. Those look delicious. And they don't just have caramel apples, they have cotton candy, they have chocolate, they have Rice Krispie treats dipped in chocolate. Oh yeah. Now we all know that Marceline's can get really cramped because of the location size. Well, Disney's fixing that because they are expanding into the old Disney dress shop location. The dress shop has moved to a different spot in downtown Disney and Marceline's is gonna be taking over this spot in a, a reimagined state. And while we're waiting for the new Marceline's to be ready, they're gonna put out a little cart here so you can still get your caramel apples and all your tasty treats. Next up, Paseo and Centrico or Centrico or whatever. 
Disney showed off some new imagery, some new concept art of these two new locations, the new Mexican offerings here in downtown Disney, which I'm actually really excited for. And you can kind of see through the windows there, the nearly finished product. Yeah, these open up very, very soon. And the outside bar is looking pretty good too. You can see they're doing some lighting testing. Yeah, you can see the upper level is all complete. They have all the decorations up over there as well. Yeah, it's gonna be nice to see the walls completely removed and we can walk around the centerpiece once again. I am curious about the price point though. I feel like it's gonna be a little bit more expensive than Tortilla Joe's. So I'm definitely bracing for that uh, because yeah, I wanna try a couple margaritas. I wanna try some of the food and the food looks really good. Uh, but yeah, definitely more on the high end scale of things compared to Tortilla Joe's. And that's not to, you know, say anything bad about Tortilla Joe's. I actually really enjoy Tortilla Joe's, but this on the other hand is something a little different. And I have a feeling I'm gonna be out here most of the time. Like we'll definitely check out the inside for sure, but I feel like this is gonna be the vibe out here. And there's one more location over here and I think I'm gonna pronounce this totally wrong, but it's Tiendita and it's a walk-up window. So you'd be able to get breakfast burritos, ice cream, I'm sure the food from Paseo and then uh, street tacos. So. What I'm really interested in is the breakfast burritos, especially during rope drop. I think this might be the place to be. All the Mexican offerings here in downtown Disney will open up in May. And then here's the new location for the Disney dress shop. It's at the old Wonderground Gallery location, which kind of bums me out. I hope they, you know, bring that back. And then if you look up there, that's the uh, dining room for Paseo. Also, it's season of the force here in downtown Disney, and they do have some specialty things available. And the big news over here, yep, Tortilla Joe's is officially closed. Don't worry though, uh, the same company that owns this location, or did own this location. They own the new locations over there, the Paseo and Centrico, same company. And I'm wondering if the same company is coming up with the new concepts that will be in this location, because Disney did share some new information about what is to come to this, uh, to this spot. And a new barbecue restaurant and steakhouse will be in this location. Now, Disney just said that, that these two concepts are gonna be on the footprint of this, so I don't know if they're gonna tear the building down or if they're gonna reuse it. I'm thinking, they're gonna reuse the building. What I'm thinking they're gonna do is they're gonna renovate this. So they're gonna like redo the face of this because this is like OG downtown Disney when they uh, you know, turned this property into the Disneyland Resort. This was kind of the style and it hasn't really changed over time. So I'm thinking they're gonna keep the building, renovate it to make it look more modern like the rest of downtown Disney and then introduce the new concepts here. They might do something to where, you know, one restaurant's downstairs and the other concepts upstairs. Uh, or vice versa, or they might tear the whole building down. Uh, you never know. You never know what the plan is, and we're not gonna find out here for the next few months. I don't think any of this stuff is gonna open up until 2025, just because this recently closed. You gotta go in and refurb it. They gotta go in and change the aesthetics of the building uh, if they do keep it. So yeah, it's gonna be quite a few months until we see the new concept show up. Interesting though, with the steakhouse and barbecue restaurant, I wonder who it's gonna be. I wonder if it's STK. You know, they have STK over at Disney Springs and I feel like Disney has a pretty good relationship with them. So maybe we're getting an STK here. The one thing that I'm pretty shocked that Disney hasn't done yet is announce maybe Gideon's coming here. Like now that we don't have Sprinkles cupcakes anymore, we have salt and straw. We have like some of the carts with churros and some other like novelty sweets. But as far as like a big, like a, I don't know, like a big heavy hitter, I feel like Gideon's would do really well here. It's doing really well at Disney Springs. I'm not a big fan of their cookies, but I do like their iced coffee and their cake. I feel like if they did that here, I mean, it would be a home run. All those structures across the way are moving along pretty nicely this week. You can see they are installing the first parts of the roof. These are gonna move along pretty quickly. And I think at the end of 2024, like near the fall or winter, these will be open up. And then the Holy Grail over here, Din Tai Fung, they announced will be opening up this summer. I can't wait to see what the inside of Din Tai Fung looks like upon completion because I went to a Din Tai Fung not too long ago. I went to the one uh, in Glendale near the Americana and that Din Tai Fung was so gorgeous inside. It was like dark and intimate and the decorations in there were like super posh. I, I, I love that environment. So I'm hoping that our Din Tai Fung here at Downtown Disney is very similar to that because that was, that was an awesome look in there. Now really quick before I officially close out the video, Let's take a stroll through World of Disney and do a good old fashioned theme park obsession merch search. Ooh, look at this. For Pixar Fest, you can get this button up, which honestly, I kind of dig this. $65 billion. And yeah, this is honestly, this is a cool art style. It's like paint splatters and everything. And again, it's super, super soft. Wow. I love that. And for Pixar Fest, you can get this Mike Wazowski t-shirt. Kind of like in that same style, the paint kind of splatter style. 
some more options up there. We got some Mike was oh, someone's stealing. Got some Mike Wazowski ears. Ooh, for Pixar Fest, you can get this nice red t-shirt. It is, let's see how much this is. I gotta put down my, my drink here. It is 44 trillion. Oh, for Pixar Fest, they have this jacket. It's almost like a windbreaker jacket. It's what the material feels like. Oh, dang. Got this Pixar Fest Mickey Mouse chest set. That's uh, this is pretty hefty too. Like it's heavy. Let's see, the price is 100 billion. Oh, we got this Pixar Fest Akuna Matata long sleeve t-shirt. We got Lion King on the front. Yeah, it kind of looks like a spirit jersey, but it's not. Oh, dang. And speaking of Pixar Fest Lion King, we have a Pixar Fest Lion King button up right here. Wow. Again, super soft. See, some of the button button ups here are soft. Others are like way more thick. I do like the ones that are more breathable, like these. Oh, I can get this thing back up. Holy moly. Okay, there we go. I, I like that it's soft, but would I get this one? No, I think I would go for the first one that we saw a little bit earlier. I don't think I've seen this Pixar Fest spirit jersey. I like the coloring on that. It's not too shabby. It's almost like a Sherbert. You could team it up with the Sherbert lounge fly bag. Pixar Fest, by the way. But yeah, so you can get you can get the spirit jersey, get the lounge fly bag, and then you can go over to the Gibson Girl ice cream parlor and get a sherbet cone, and there you go. Oh, wow, we got some more orange sherbet going on over here. This time it's mini. Ooh, look at this. I haven't noticed this before. The Pixar Fest Darth Vader lounge fly bag. The lounge fly logo on the side there. Some more important buttons on this side. Dang, this is pretty legit. Wow, we have a Minnie Mouse explosion over here. Oh, someone's stealing again. But my goodness, by the way, this is not Pixar Fest related. Well, this bag is right here. This is a Pixar Fest Minnie Mouse bag by Loungefly. But everything else is uh, is just Minnie Mouse, not related to Pixar Fest at all. Well, I think these shoes are Pixar Fest as well. Yeah, see, there is so much Pixar Fest stuff in World of Disney, so they definitely have you covered. Like I was saying earlier, Pixar Fest is no joke. It's a pretty big celebration. Okay, I've made it to the exit of Disneyland over here because I'm contemplating whether or not I want to include a Tiana's Bayou Adventure update in today's video. It's still light out, so that's why I'm kind of like thinking about it. So we can see a few little updates if they've been working on stuff. Let's see what the monorail says. Uh, uh, mm. hmm, hmm, very interesting. The monorail wasn't sure either. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and skip out on it. I'll be back another day, like in the next day or two. So we'll, we'll save it for another time. So with that, let's head back to the good old Sticky and Friends parking structure. Well, that's gonna do it for today's video from the Disneyland Resort. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you could let me know by smashing the thumbs up button. And if you're new to the channel and you love everything that I do and you love the Disney content, and all the other theme park content, well, you should consider subscribing because it's free, it doesn't cost a thing. It helps out the channel and it lets you know every time I post a new video. But with that, I hope you have a beautiful day, morning, evening, whatever it is, and I'll see you next time in the parks. Bye.